I was I was frustrated because the money that I was giving to my ex at the time, I wasn't sure that it was going to the children. And I talked to a friend of mine who had already gone through divorce, and he said, absolutely, it's none of your goddamn business, Corey. <laughs> As long as your children are eating, have clothes, and have a roof over their heads, it doesn't matter what she spends the money you give her on. It's none of your business. And that's the way it is. And you do not get to control your ex. You don't. You didn't own them when you were together. You don't own them now. And it, it's a lesson that many men seem to still grapple with. Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's the reason that many men are divorced. <laughs> because they couldn't figure it out when they were together. All right, so hi and welcome to uh, The Feminist Family. I'm Pamela. I'm Corey. And we are The Feminist Family and so happy to be here again with you. It's always a pleasure. We wish we could do this more than once every two weeks, but hey. So it works. Yes. So At cool. least we are consistent. So if this is the first time you're coming on our channel, please uh, go back and um, uh, watch uh, the other videos that we have already posted and get to know us more, get to interact with us. Yep. So I guess today we wanted to talk about something kind of personal. Um, uh, we've been dealing with some stuff since December, and uh, I guess we kind of wanted to lay it out so that people who maybe have also had to deal with it uh, can see that they're not by themselves, I guess. And, and, and it helps us too, because it uh, gives us you know, the ability to process what we're dealing with and 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 kind of what verbalize some of the things so i guess we haven't seen our daughters pam's daughters my stepdaughters in two months because we made a choice that was incredibly hard uh, but that we thought was for the best of the girls i think that uh I, we're not here we're not gonna i don't think we're gonna try not Right. We're not here to uh, like talk shit about uh, their dad, who they are with, so they are safe with an adult that they are uh, they are well taken care of. They're happy. They're healthy. Uh, we miss them a lot. I I guess where do we start? Like, there's been an ongoing situation with uh, the relationship between us and her, their father, and. Uh, we can't seem to make it work, and we don't have anything, uh, any legal like writing. We don't have any like custody agreement or anything. There's no paperwork uh, dictating this set of behaviors that are required, and so ultimately it ended up where it felt like we were tearing the children apart by uh, them having to deal with uh, both sides and rather than continue that without any guidance and without any quarter on either side, we decided that we would let him have the girls full time. And it's been hard. Yes, it is. It's been hard, but it was a necessary decision. And um, I got the chance uh, to... Um, to see that uh, when we thought that it was something that we were just um, the one facing it, and I could not find resources on uh, on that or other mom who got to take the same decision that uh, we took. I went. I remember going on a, a YouTube and you know trying to find testimonies of any mom who would be talking about that. I found just one video talking about it, and uh, basically, we were we found ourselves at a point where that was the only choice. Yeah, the, we could pick in. We tried many things uh, before. Uh, it's an 
as as you said, it's been uh, going on since quite a few times. I would say two years actually. Yeah. Two years that we we've been uh, trying um, things. But at this point, like we better uh, accept what it was. It's a co a situation of co parenting that failed. Yeah, failed yeah. and got to the point where we thought that that's the best thing to do yeah. is to withdraw ourselves from that dynamic and um even if it's something that comes from with a lot of suffer we suffering yeah right? yeah right. we still think that that's the best yeah solution and even navigating in it we went through like high and lows like uh in this co-parenting not that many highs <laughs> yeah a it's lot been of uh... Like no. mostly a, a series of conflicts over and over, like of different, different, different escalations, different types of conflict. But yeah, um, but we reach a point where we thought that as adults we need to think about you know the little kids in the middle of that mess. And personally, I grew up with um, just my father. Yeah. And I believe that women and men, after a kid is born, they can all take care of a kid. Yeah. Um, I grew up just with my father. Um, and later I met you when I already had kids and I was able to see you taking care of uh, them. Yeah. And their dad, I believe, has proved you know, the last three years uh, that he can take care of them. He's capable. He's capable of taking care of them. Yeah. Uh, when we're talking about basic needs, right? Yeah. Of yeah. the kids. Um, we are not afraid that it's kind of kids who are going to be hungry or, you know, no. not sleeping or who want to work for school. or We believe that's something that he can do. Um, yeah. Plus, we live in a community, I believe, uh, where we know people at the school. Yeah. Where the kids are going. Yeah. Um, we know. I know the people who go to the church. Yeah. With him, and I believe that if there is something that is that needs to be reported, we will know what's happening. Yeah. But. For now, we are not seeing the girls, and we are prepared, and we work on that, that this situation can go on uh, for a long time. Yeah, we, time. At, at this point, we're sort of prepared to for it to go on indefinitely. Yes, with the hope that, you know, we're talking about kids who are growing, um, where they're going to be, you know, gaining more and more independence yeah. i would say um you know our kids the little girls are nine almost nine and five yeah the one with nine i believe in three years something like she will be able to choose to what parents she would like to go yeah but in the in the meanwhile it's better that the kids be with him not going through our house to his house and doing the co-parenting what would you say was the hardest in that co-parenting uh well not doing the he said she said sort of thing yeah no. like so then uh their father would say something right and then it contradicts the things that we believe or that we say and so then the girls come to our house and we we tried to we tried to make it just a safe place for them, but also we tried to tell them what we see as the truth. And when they're they're hearing two sides of things, then they don't know who to believe or what's going on. They're just confused and and sometimes they're hurt by it. Uh, so that was ultimately like 
yeah, like I think that was a thing that we decided was no good, like because we couldn't, we couldn't, uh, couldn't not contradict some of the things that they were told. Which is not bad, actually, uh, for kids to be exposed to all point of view. Yeah. But I believe that was made uh, even harder with the fact that, you know, um, their dad not accepting our relationship. Yeah. Even though it's something that happened way longer after I was with him. And that's a relationship that has proven, you know, uh, on the time, uh, on how you care about the girls. Like yeah. you were basically... Um, yeah, he was gone for two years. He was gone two and for, a half years. Yes, and where you were the one who was acting as their father, even though we never made any confusion. They, no, in they their always mind. called me Corey. They always call you Corey, and, and he was always Papa. Yes, and we would use words like a uh, you know stepdad or uh, you yeah. know, um, when they would call dad or Papa yeah. their father. And never by his name, even yeah. when we would be talking about him to the girls or around the girls, we always made sure that you know we're talking about their father, yeah, right, yeah, but it's not something that he believes in, yeah, well, I mean, uh, I'm sure at this point it's not controversial for me to point out that he like he went to a legal aid lawyer to try and dispute the fact that stepfathers exist in Canada, which I'm, I'm sorry to say, stepdads are a thing. That's just how it goes. Um, <laughs> it wasn't even an issue, actually, for the kids because nope. um, they, they are kids. Kids nowadays, you know, they are exposed to blended family. They are exposed of to um, um, couple splitting either in uh, movies or you know in the shows or in the books it's it's a fact you know in their class yeah. they have parents who are uh, separated or yeah. who are in a blended family it's not it's not really something new but it seems as something new at 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 the beginning we would laugh about it yeah we would laugh about it we thought that it's something that will you know Reality's got to catch up eventually. Yeah, right? exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's gonna disappear. Like he's gonna stop. Like you know. Um, you can't just keep denying we, the world as it is. We would have to adjust each time the girls, because we were uh, uh, sharing, uh, like the kids, even without any contract, we were sharing custody, uh, like two weeks on, two weeks off, which is um, something that he decided, and we approved, and we went with we it. adapted we adapted yeah but it was something where we had to restart each time from a point that he would give yeah. like um it could be like a yeah no Corey is not your father even though there that was, was never, never <laughs> a was confusion never a said. um and this escalated to uh you should not talk to him basically not even yeah. look at him in the eyes we like went a, to if you see a, him like uh yeah we went to their show and uh yeah and they weren't really even allowed to talk to me or you know which is pretty tough it was hard and uh you know you make the call you go like okay like i can deal with this because i know that as they get older they're gonna realize that I'm just here. Like, I'm not imposing on them. I'm just trying to love them and provide for them as best I can. And I'm not trying to force anything onto them. Uh, but, <clears throat> but it, it became, you know, it was hard. I, I'm not going to say it was easy. No, it wasn't easy because, um, what do you tell a kid in that situation, right? If the kid is coming and, uh, saying okay um i have as you know um i need to respect what i've been taught mm -hmm. i'm not going to be talking to your partner like we, even though we live in the same house even though he never did anything bad to them even though i never thought at any moment that 
the kids believed in that. No, they're doing what they're told, right? They are doing what they're told, because even they... though they don't understand, because kids don't always understand, you know, why this person or why they are getting all these orders or, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah but as a mom, understand. what do I tell them, right? Do I tell them, no, uh, you can talk to him, then why they've been taught to not talk to you? It's, it's, it's impossible for us to explain to them without, without being like, without doing the, the same thing that we see him as doing. Exactly. So it was putting us, especially me, in a situation where I would be like, okay, I tell the kid that it's not good to be doing that. Yeah then they understand that their father is not teaching them something good. Right. But he's their father, right? Yeah. So I'm telling them, okay, what you, what else are you learning that is bad? Mm. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, so now they're wondering, like they're always questioning themselves because they don't you know, feel like they've got it right, you know? I, I believe, and that's something that I, I, all the time, like uh, I made sure I wasn't doing. It yeah. was to talk bad about their father. Yeah. In front of them. Yeah. You know, or to them, making sure that you know, I better say nothing, or I, and I'm not teaching them that that he's bad or he's you know that he did this to me or this is the reason why we are not together or, or anything because they are kids. Yeah. That's not a matter of kids. So what do I tell them? How do I do that? How do I tell them that, okay, each time they are coming, okay, what you're learning is not correct. What you're learning, what you're doing is insulting me. Yeah. And then I teach them what to do. And they go on the other side. I don't know how it was happening. Yeah. But then they go there to be told what? What your mom is telling you is not true. Right. I thought that no kids deserve to have that yeah. as childhood. Yeah. Um, as far as I remember, I always missed my mom when I was a kid. But I still think that it's it's still better than to be in that situation mm. where you have your father and your mom who are fighting through you. Yeah. yeah. Right? Of course, the first question that would come is, we live in Canada, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this is not Burundi, like where I grew up, where women don't have rights, where things can go why the justice why didn't we go to the justice and make that stop right to seek for a <laughs> because justice is only for you with money and, <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's not something that is just given like that no. you know um we went through a lot since we met and financially i mean oh yeah no it's because been a... when we met we're gonna come back on that, but I found myself in a complicated situation of immigration where for almost a whole year I wasn't working. Yeah. Right? And even after, um, I, when I could work, I wasn't ready mentally yeah. to be working. So for a very long time, you the one who, who was providing for most of the. And for part of that, there was COVID. So they I was laid off. They were, yeah, exactly. And then, and then I, I separated ways from the company that I worked for for six months because of uh, scheduling conflicts that, that didn't work for us. And so our income was quite low for they quite are, a stretch. Financially, we are considered as high earners. Now, yeah. Now, even though, you know... Um, <laughs> Because of when we so we, have, we see all the expenses that we have we, as a blended family, you know, yeah. uh, sharing custody with the kids, like it's we could have tried to work more, to earn more, so that we go to fight him 
and the justice because obviously we do not qualify for legal aid. Right. But working more to earn money to go to fight him in the justice. Just so that we can end up in a position where... You have a full time. I have a full time. Yeah. That means working even more yeah. than that full time. Yeah. While having the kids, so taking the time to spend with the kids to go to work so that we could pay someone who can help us fight to share custody yeah. of our kids with him. Yeah. Because that have always has always been what we wanted. We wanted to share custody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the fight would be to get this a document yeah. that um, regulates a... <laughs> that custody that is shared between us. Honestly, anybody who gets into these things should know. But we we tried to do that actually. Yeah. We went to see a lawyer. Yeah. And the way it was working, like we ended up paying almost two thousand dollars. Just about three thousand dollars. Without <laughs> any agreement with. Yeah. Emails after email, like with him, because yep. playing with the system. Yeah. He can have legal aid. Yeah, and, and we got to pay He can choose to not dollars. even use it. And then we were like, no, we're not going there, right? If we are earning more money, that's to, that's to get our family safe. It's to improve our lives, actually, yeah. 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 That's not to go to fight him. Yeah. So we thought that we would be going on like that, but things escalated, really. Things escalated to the point where we were even, you know, uh, thinking about, you know, how, because each time the kids will come back, there will be something, you know, that is even harder to yeah. to deal with. Yeah. So we would find ourselves with having to deal with that all the time that we had the kids and it would be more and more like a nonsense yeah yeah i don't know and it's i don't know it's... how how do you do it? like i don't think that any kid would choose to have to see their two parents even divided like that honestly they look like you know yeah like they're yeah they're being pulled apart right like they are actually being pulled in two directions it made me feel like if things continue like that they're gonna be lost between us and when they're gonna be needing like at least one of their parents they won't have any they won't have any because they go there they are taught nonsense they come with some nonsense at our house but what do we do at a certain moment well, it was becoming know. harder and harder, and you know, to yeah, to not say that that's nonsense. Yeah. Well, they don't know, like they're not old enough to know that it's nonsense. So then it feels to them like we're like giving them heck, like they're they're in trouble when we're trying, you know. So it feels like we're doing harm, right? Mm -hmm. And that's that's not well. Obviously, we don't want to do that. We don't want to hurt them in any way if we can help it. No. Like so, that's so that's what we do. We. I love them so much. Yeah. And I believe that we took this decision for them. Yeah. Because no kids deserve to grow up like that. No yeah. kids, like maybe you know. Me more than you, you know, I'm used to be having people I miss a lot. No, I think you too, you have yeah, people you miss, of. sort of. <laughs> but I I have people, like I haven't seen my father since 2016. Right. I haven't seen any of my brothers and sisters since 2016. Yeah. I, the nearest cousin I have, or auntie, I need to drive like eight hours. Yeah. So we living in the internet world, right? Yeah. I can communicate with all these people, even though I know that it's not possible that we'll be seeing each other. And for, again, good reason. Yeah. <laughs> I had to flee my country <laughs> because yeah. of what 
because of my activism, right? Yeah, yeah. But maybe my brothers and sisters didn't participate as much as me, so they were not targeted as I was. So I'm the one who had to flee, you know? Yeah. And I tend to consider that's the same thing. Yeah. I consider that we are fleeing this situation. Yeah. Yeah. That was explosive because it was really becoming explosive. Like we went to to even discuss like what's gonna be the next step. Is it gonna be like to accuse you of you we know, don't know, yeah. We don't know what he's gonna say next. How will this end? Because honestly we were not seeing any and <sighs> any change or any hope that it's gonna be better. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. And I know, like, yeah, no, I, I don't, I have, I'm not used to missing people in the same way. I I have people that I haven't talked to a long time in my life, but generally I'm fine with that. Um, the, but I, and I know that the girls, they are so, are my stepchildren. They aren't my children, but I've invested a lot of time and effort and care into this relationship with Pam and the girls and a lot of myself has been poured into this as a, as a person who cares deeply for the people in my life. And uh, we argued a little bit when we made the decision because neither of us wanted the girls to feel like we abandoned them and not, uh, we want them to know that we love them and we want them to know that we're always here for them when they are able to come back. But I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. It's just, it's, it's hard. It's, it's pretty hard. It's uh, one of the questions um, that comes like all the time is, so how many times are you, are you seeing the girls? Like, when are you seeing them? Is it going to be like, you are giving him the full custody and you're going to be seeing them like every other weekend or um, every other Wednesday. And right now we're not seeing them at all. Right now we're not seeing them at all. And I don't see how that can be better. I don't know. I don't see how that can be better. Honestly, I know that if I see them, they're going to try, right? Yeah, yeah. They're going to try. I'm going to have to explain to them why they cannot stay with us. What am I going to tell them? Yeah. We cannot, you cannot stay with us because the situation right now with your parent, with your, your father is so toxic that we want to protect you. And then what? Send them to him? <laughs> yeah. It's so far, I think that I, I'm not ready. Honestly, I, I don't know. I if don't. I, I don't have any good things that I could. That would. I don't think that we could explain it to them. But also, like, part of me is saying that, like, I would love to see the girls. You know, I would love to have them home with us. But, but also, what do you tell them? Like you say, when they have to go back to their dads, or, or like, when you're saying like, like, and it's not like with no indication that they're going to be coming home with us again. So, or like, I don't know. There's nothing that we can say that would, like, we, I don't feel like we can make the situation good by having them with us for that brief time, as much as I wish they could come to us. But they have a home. They're not living on the street. No, they are not in the street. And um, deep in me, I believe that they're going to miss us, right? And... They're going to even hate us, right? Because yeah. now no one is contradicting anything, yeah. right? We are not defending or trying to, you know, yeah. no, nothing. It's his narrative and that's it's it. It's his narrative. And I still believe that it's better that they take his narrative fully right now. Yeah. Because deep in me, I believe that it's not a good investment mm. <laughs> for him. Because, you know, um, all the time that we are not going to be seeing each other, it's on him, right? Because no one, no one should be abused or accept abuse for 
take abuse for someone else yeah. and especially coming from the same blood right mm. um in me i feel like i can sacrifice myself for my kids yeah if it's someone who was you know shooting on them or yeah i can take that bullet right right i can do everything for them yeah but not as much if it's in a fight with their father yeah well and it's like you say like <laughs> we can't all we can do is contribute to the suffering of the children in this situation we can't actually reduce it because we cannot sit idly by when they come here and, and listen to them say untrue things but then that's contributing to their own their suffering and then that's not being true yeah like that's not being true yeah i still don't know what to say like if they come if if we see them and let's say the goal now at that meeting is they won't talk to you or they won't look at you how do i act with that with that yeah i don't know you know no, I, I, don't know. I go on and say okay at least i'm seeing them yeah but at what cost but like like i'm i'm and I, I'd I'd say I, yeah i would i would like to see them but i want to give them hugs i want to give them kisses i want to i want to talk to them and tell them how much i love them i don't want them to come to the house and be like distant and because they told they were taught that they can't love me that they can't care for me or or I, i'm not allowed to love them right like that's i want to i want it to be good <laughs> it's it's the same thing it's the same thing i feel like uh when uh when thinking about like uh you know going to my country and, and like of course i would love to go there and yeah. hug my auntie hug my my cousin my nieces who are growing up because basically this last 20 years i was almost out of my country you know see i would love to go and hug these people you know and and i'm like some people have told me like no at least you know try how i'm afraid to be killed yeah you know yeah what will that benefit yeah to who yeah for the price of the last hug yeah the last cuddle that will last few hours yeah because anyway that's not where i live i'm gonna take that such works. risk yeah i feel the same with the girls right yeah. i'm yeah. like we see them and we see them for hours how are the days that gonna you know after how how would that feel yeah no you're right i love what would that save i think that is it's a romantic idea you know yeah yeah that hug that that presence but is that really a presence yeah and yeah like in the fantasy is not the reality right no basically right. like uh having my kids crying because they want to stay with me yeah and being in a position where they cannot stay with me yeah how do i do that i don't know i don't see how how would that be helpful wouldn't for what cause like no that's why i am accepting embracing the sufferance yeah. and telling myself that we go through this and you know we're going to get used to it and you know it was pretty hard when i had to flee my country yeah. you know the first days yeah the first year yeah it doesn't feel the same now like almost 9 years after right yeah. but i something tells me that it's not even going to be that long right yeah i could see that i don't see this situation lasting like a four years five years you know right yeah we say that we're preparing for it to be indefinite but yeah i yeah i don't see it i mean i'll be surprised if it lasts a year i'll be surprised if it lasts six months like i i really feel like it can it can last i really feel <laughs> like long. i really feel like we'll have this resolved 
you know. How can that be resolved? I don't know, but I feel like. Like, do you imagine that he can, that the situation can change and this co parenting would become not non toxic? Well, by, by any yeah, it's magic? hard to imagine. It's hard to imagine, but I don't know. Unless he's the one who'll be like, okay, I'm God. I'm leaving and uh, take your kids because I don't know. We will see how all of this will evolve. And uh, yeah, but something is, I'm so glad because uh, before we took that decision again, as I was saying, like I wasn't finding like any resources yeah. Yeah. and uh, I didn't know. I've been talking about this like uh, with either my therapist or uh, you know my doctor you know but i don't think that i got like the same support that i got now that i talked about that on my uh, instagram right yeah yeah because now i have like uh, i didn't know that so many people are concerned by by this situation i didn't yeah. know that women been taking this decision before me that i'm not the first one to do that that some have took that decision i got testimonies like 17 years ago and they were telling me how it ended and it's something that is reassuring me yeah but also i i see that now i'm so aware that it's something that finally so many women are going through it and i think that it comes again to what we've been talking about like uh the the role you know the gendered roles of you know in a couple yeah something that came really in many times in my in the comments was like how can you leave girls um to a man who yourself have already said in the past or now that you know he was abusive towards you how can you be safe that uh, you can take care of your kids? Right. Except. Because he'd been taking care of them yeah. for two years. Yeah. And, and as far as we can the tell. The only flaws that we can talk about yeah. him in, is it's always really, what he does to attack yeah, me. Yeah, that's right. It's always it's in not, relation to you or me. It's never, yeah. He's never hard on the girls that we know of. Like no. we cannot, we cannot say that he ever hurt the girls. We can say that he, or he learned from that, right? Maybe, yeah. What, uh, what he wasn't doing on Canada's standard, <laughs> I would say, he had to learn. Yeah, sure. That you know, but, but like, say, like we've also got people who can check in on them and who know them, yeah, and see got... them regularly, and mm. can say whether they seem like they're good or. They seem like they're good. Yeah. So I don't think that me as a mom, and because they are girls, that they're going to be an issue because they don't grow up with me alone, you know, who is bringing that maternal, you know, side. I believe that that's something that still tells women put so much weight on only them yeah. why is just removing that weight from from the the father right you know how many it's more you know common that fathers leave yeah situations well, that's and right. we are so used to be seeing single moms yeah right taking care of the kids and it's not something that is shocking anyone right <laughs> yeah Yet, somehow, <laughs> men can also. You were a single father. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> when I met you, you were taking care of your kid. Yeah. I believe that men too can take care of uh, uh, kids, and I believe that kids don't only learn from their parents, right? Yeah. They also learn from the society, and uh, I have those values, maybe. You know, uh, I grew up where they say that the kid is in the community, right? It's not perfect, mm -hmm. but we also need to understand that 
no one no woman should live in an abuse in an abusive situation co-parenting uh right. i i am more and more that you know women needs to be taking this kind of decision yeah i don't see a problem with that myself like it's if if a man insists on controlling the situation and wants to use the children to control the ex then he can have the children full time yeah there's no reason like this is the thing you don't get to control your ex you don't you get... are not in control of their life this is a this is a lesson i learned very early on when i was separated was i was i was frustrated because the money that i was giving to my ex at the time i wasn't sure that it was going to the children and i talked to a friend of mine who had already gone through divorce and he said absolutely it's none of your goddamn business Corey. <laughs> As long as your children are eating, have clothes, and have a roof over their heads, it doesn't matter what she spends the money you give her on. It's none of your business. And that's the way it is. And you do not get to control your ex. You don't. You didn't own them when you were together. You don't own them now. And it, it's a lesson that many men seem to still grapple with. Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's the reason that many men are divorced. <laughs> because they couldn't figure it out when they were together, that they don't get to control and they don't own their wives. Yeah, but since we accepted divorce, like, we also need to be accepting the, you know, that other separation that is also necessary in order to protect the kids. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We, we, it's us who say uh, that that was the only choice that we had, right? We yeah. could have wanted this co-parenting like that and going well and daily. continued yeah until and continue and be fighting right yeah. till the end you know um but it's like we said like that that's just hurting that's just kids. hurting the kids that's not helping us we're suffering through that too that's yeah. selfish yeah and and it's just for you know for our own egos yeah yeah it's just to keep fighting because we think that we deserve to win it's not actually thinking about the well-being of the girls. So, yes, because they belong to us because they are our kids. I think that's where it comes. Yeah, from, yeah right. I think so. I don't consider my kids to be a pro yeah. pride. Like <laughs> all I want is that they grow up like a yeah healthy, happy, healthy, happy, and um, loving themselves and. Uh, and I believe that there are so many ways to reach that point. Yeah. I'm aware that um, all of this, you know, we, you know, removing ourselves from this co-parenting going to affect them, right? Yeah. In a certain way, you know. But I still believe that something I hope that we will be able to take care at a certain moment. There are resources. Yeah. Right, yeah. there are resources, and uh, let's just hope for the best, right? Yep, yeah. So, I think that's it. How do you feel? I'm glad we said it. I'm glad it's out here, it's going to be on the internet for people to see. I think uh, hopefully it helps somebody feel better. Uh, hopefully, um, I think it helped me feel better to say it like because it, it feels so much like when we're dealing with this. It's just us. Yes. And it's so isolating. It's so is isolating. I'm not feeling any more isolated, though. No. Since uh, the moment I talked about it on yeah. uh, Instagram, I got, on a daily basis, I get like a minimum now. It's starting to, to slow down, but it's going to be like three, four new women telling me that they are seeing themselves in my situation. Yeah. And more at the beginning. Um, I hope that we talking about that, you know, anyone who is in the same situation going to be able to grab something. I'm not giving any advice on that. We, you know. we are qualified. We, are, we aren't qualified <laughs> in that. I'm not giving any advice. I'm not saying this is how women should be doing or this is how. No. No. On this, 
we made it, we made this call because this is this what is we pretty think new is, for me. Yeah. This is pretty new for you. <laughs> like uh, I don't know anyone who took this is this decision before, and no. you know I'm not getting coaches on that. We're never getting in this, and and also maybe that's a situation that can evolve. Yeah, in a certain way. Yeah, soon. So. Yeah, Everything we that we're saying today could be different. That it's a mm. uh, you know, for a time that's not yet determined. Maybe it's two months. Maybe it's one we month. We don't know. We don't know. But all <sighs> we know is why we took that decision and how we're doing. How you doing? How how did this affect you? What well, you I, like I said, I know I know they're not my kids, but. Mm-hmm. I'm incredibly sad a lot of the time because, like, I love them. I was there for two and a half, almost three years, raising them before their dad got back. And then I was still there caring for them and loving them for another year, a year and a half, right? So, like, we've been together for four years. We've been living together for three years and 11 months. <laughs> well, now, yeah, something like that now, right? So, like, we've been living together for over four years. Four years, yes. Yeah. And you you basically had to meet them right away yeah. when we met. So, so the last one was, uh, she wasn't even, she was almost one year. She's yeah. five now. We had started seeing each other right before her, her first birthday. birthday. Yeah. So... Um, I changed. I changed her diapers. I fed her. I clothed her. I. You saw her walking. I woke up and the, yeah, I saw her first uh, steps. steps. I heard her first words. I, <laughs> like I, I, I was there, doing the dad thing, doing the caregiving thing. Um, I you woke got up all the, the sleepless nights. I woke up in the middle of the night. I. You got to uh, the waiting room, to the doctor, to <laughs> inside the doctor's office. You were, you know. So. And for me, it's been almost nine years that yeah. I'm a mom. You know, I was a mom and I'm still a mom, even though I don't have the kids yeah, with me to right. little kids. But that has been my life. Yeah. Of, of the past 10 years. So. It's. To think like that it's that yeah it's sad we're it's, sad <laughs> it's sad it's pretty new it made me question myself like yeah. who am I what do I do with this time like uh, and we're still figuring this out we're still figuring this out you know there are days when it's harder than others what is the hardest for you <laughs> I, I mean it's it's all the time when I'm on night shifts because night shifts, you're not as, your brain isn't as working as well. I'm, so I get, I have, I have pictures of the family, of the kids on my phone and, and on my computer screens and, and whatnot. So that's my screensavers and my backgrounds. And when I see some of the pictures, like I get pretty sad because I wish that I had those moments back. That I could see them again and show them that I love them. My my kids are older, uh, and but I think going through this has made me appreciate them more. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how are you doing. Ah, uh, it's it's hard because like every moment of the life like make makes me think about them because. Yeah. Either I'm preparing something to eat. Yeah. I'm a person who's now preparing food without taking in consideration that, you know, they're going to be here. Yeah. Or grocery shopping. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, waking up in the morning and also, you know, how I can be anxious. Yeah. Um, and like, what do I do? It's like, you know, I want to do so many things. But at the same time, I'm like, you know, yeah. how long is this going to be? Like, is this the moment to start something new, to continue what I was doing? 
um, it's it's in everything because we had we still had the little one would come in the middle of the night, you know, yeah. and even you know you and me, like yeah. part of our conversations, like we were parents, you know, yeah. we started to go together to date as parents, yeah. you know, yeah, and very quickly we were living together, yeah. so. I'm learning to just be with you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it's all the jobs. And you, as you say, like uh, the pictures, like a uh, Google coming. And yeah. Yeah, it's nice, right? Like having the... highlights every day and remembering some moments yeah. and something I try. And I, I believe I'm able to, to do it now, mm. surprisingly is to not hate their father i'm not using my time during my day to hate him yeah yeah i think that's important right like it's <laughs> i'm not it seems like a waste of our energy I'm, I'm almost not thinking about him even negatively or uh, yeah. you know yeah no that i think that's good it's a, it is a waste of our energy like the, this is a situation which we have to deal with right like it's i went through that that phase yeah yeah i went through that phase where i was like oh my god i hate him yeah to see that you know this is the life i get to live but i guess i have my way of coping or uh you know yeah going out of a topic if I don't want to stay in that anxious <sighs> moment. But it's something that I try to not do, honestly. Like, yeah. Even when I'm thinking about what we're going through, like, he's disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even though, like, in some ways, like, for our situation to change, it, it does rely on him. Yeah. But, but also, yeah, like, but I, in my, when I'm remembering the girls, I'm just remembering them. I'm missing them. Mm -hmm. I'm wishing they could be with us. But I'm not thinking about him. Yeah. <laughs> because that's because, something that is really surprising me because, like, yeah. I didn't know myself like that. Yeah. You know, I thought that I would be, you know, but I guess I reached that point where yep. emotionally I'm like <laughs> blind. Yeah. To, to that thing. Yeah. No. So, yeah. But, you know, also, I want to enjoy my time. Right. Because. <laughs> I want to enjoy my time. <laughs> because you can put your toothbrush in a place and it's not in the toilet. Yes. <laughs> Next time you come back to it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I want to enjoy my time and I don't, my intention is not to be depressed and uh, lose all my uh, faculties and yeah. just be dying. I got some, uh, you know, um, people asking me that, you know, uh, you should never take that decision or people saying like, I would never take that decision because I would, I would be dying. I don't feel like I, I am ready to let myself die. I, I think I understand or, the sentiment, but also like I think I think it's a little misguided because as much as you care about your children, like you're a person who deserves to live and have a life. And if you're if you're not alive, you know, if you're just depressed and dying, your children can't come back to you later. Yeah. I uh my intention is that I would like to stay in good shape mentally, physically, yeah. uh, emotionally, you know, uh, so that that moment when they're going to need that other parent, I'm going to be there. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're going to be there and ready to, you know, yeah. to provide all that, you know, a parent needs to, to provide yeah. to them. And, and also I'm going to, yeah. I want to be happy, yeah. you know, because I don't see why I would live a relationship that I consider to be abusive. Mm -hmm. And then 
get to the point where I am even losing my kids, almost, you know? Yeah. All that to be, to live sad yeah. and yeah. sick of it. Yeah. Then I better stay in that relationship, right? I better stay in that. Well, and I think that this, this speaks to like some a conversation we were having a few days ago about the difference between being depressed and feeling sad. Yeah. Because we feel sad. Mm -hmm. And that comes and goes. You, you have your moments where, you, where it hits you and then you do something else. You're, you're, you're sad, you're, you cry for a moment and then you start watching a funny show or whatever. Exactly. But when you're depressed, that's all you can think about. It's all you can do. There's nothing else there, right? I'm going to be doing everything that it, it, it takes, right? Yeah. To, to not go down in that way, yeah. you know? Um, at least I'm, I'm very glad that we are aware of all of that, you know? <laughs> Many times we are self, um, how, how is it? Um, evaluating oh, yeah. ourselves or, or I ask you, right? Yep. If you see that, you know, uh, it's not working and really I'm getting depressed, let me know. You know, let me yeah. know so that, you know, I, I can consult, you know, because I believe that, you know, it's okay to be, to be, it's a thing, it's a condition to be depressed. Yeah, that's but right. also there is help. Yeah, there, that's right. right? Yeah. And so far I'm coping, working out, watching Netflix. <laughs> Netflix is my new friend. And, and discussing and uh, talking with, uh, interacting with um, other women who are going yeah. through the same as me and muting anyone who is just <laughs> bringing any toxicity because like I got my doors. Yeah. I got my doors. Obviously. We don't need, we don't need the extra toxicity. No. So. No. Yeah. So whew, <laughs> that's good to talk about that. Yeah, I think so. I think that we should stop now. Okay. Okay. So I guess, uh, that's it for today. Uh, where can people find us on the internet? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, uh, Pamela Kazikare. Just know that I speak French there most of the time. <laughs> Instagram has this nice little feature where down at the bottom of your status, you can hit see translation. You can translate, yeah. <laughs> you can translate, but most of the time, if I am talking using my voice, that is going to be incredible. That's true. Yeah. I don't watch much of your reels and stuff. Cause, yeah. 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 And I'm skeptical leftist or skeptical lefty on all social media or uh, skepticalleftist.com is my website. Thank you very much for watching. I'll leave uh, the comments what you thought about this. And as long as it's not toxic. Don't be toxic. <laughs> don't. Please. Please. We don't need it.